I'm no fritzing parts creation expert, so there might be a quicker way, but this is how I make them. I'll be making a surface mount diode. I'm going to pick something slightly difficult to give you more of an idea of what tricks you can use. So we go to search, whack in diode, we'll grab this SOD323. It's slightly different from an SMD because it's got these raised legs, but it'll do. Uh, right click, edit. Now we go file, save as new part. D I L D E S M D. Okay. You now have the new part in your mind bin. Right click, export part. Put it into a folder. Go to that folder. Change the extension to zip. Extract it. Now let's look at the breadboard SVG. That's our SVG. We now go um, edit. XML editor. And we'll just put that in the side on the side here. Inside the XML editor, there are your nodes in different groupings. If you open a grouping, you see like polygons and stuff. If you click on them, they will highlight the actual part when this is on an arrow. We will zoom in a little to make it a bit clearer. Just press the plus button, click on the screen, press the plus button until it's a bit larger. Now inside all these uh, nodes, you can click on a node, see that we've clicked on this node for this bent leg, which we won't be using in SMD, so you have it selected, up here is the delete, it takes it away. You can do it the node selection method by clicking the second one down, picking a node. It will now light up in the, in the editor and you can actually individually delete that. Pick another one down here, delete that. And eventually you can get rid of this whole thing. But you'll see they're all coming from, from this one group. They're all coming from this one group, so just select the group, delete it. Once you've deleted all the little lines in there, you've got your major group left. You select it, it's on the path here, delete it. And there's another one below, select it. It must be all in this group, so we delete, delete this whole group, gone. Now for an SMD component, we want silver end caps. Since one, there is one that looks sort of similar here, we'll be using that one. So the rectangle here, we'll just use this duplicate button. And then up here we'll select arrow, and we now have XY coordinates. We want to move it over a bit, so we'll change this to a unit that we can understand, millimeters, and we'll just guess. You can do this more scientifically, but just guess, just say three millimeters. It's now over there. You can make it a bit narrower. Width 0.15 like that, simple. Pick it again, duplicate, change the Y now. You want to go closer to zero, which is down. Instead of 4.6, we'll try 4.4. Now it's moved down, but it's still black there, so we have to raise it to the top. Now you can see it. We will zoom in a bit more to make it a bit clearer. Click on the screen, plus, 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 plus. Node select, that's our node. We want to go a bit lower. Change the arrow, um, go 4.3, 4.4. 
Divide. Four point two five. Raise the top again because it's a little bit black here. It's too tall. We'll now shrink this down height wise to point five mm. Point four of mm. You can actually do this quicker by selecting the node, pick, picking this one. And it's, you'll, you'll find this is 3.45 high. So we go select back onto this node again. We want 3.45 high. I'll give it a touch more. We now have to make this darker than the top to give it 3D perspective. So we, we've clicked our node. We just click on one of these colors here. Darker, darker, darker. Maybe lighter. Close enough. We now need this end cap on the other end. Node select. Select it in the editor. Duplicate. Pick the arrow. Drag it over. Same here, node select, this node, duplicate, arrow, drag it over. You'll notice the location is X655. We'll edit, undo that. We have the node here. We haven't selected. We go 4.655 does the same thing. This node now, I want to change the color a little bit because it's to discern it from the end cap, so I'll pick white. And that's that's it. Zoom out. Part finished. File, save as, give it a different name. Inkscape, plain, save. Now we'll come back to fritzing, the part, it's best not to have it open on the screen because sometimes it crashes, but we'll try it. Edit part, file, node image, find your image, it's the one with two on it, breadboard two, open, loaded, file, save, ok. That's it. Finished. That's it for the breadboard. Finished. Now we'll go to schematic view. Schematic. We'll change this drawing just for the sake of it. Diode. Z E N E R Z E N A. All right. We have this one now. We go right click. Edit part. Bendable legs. That's okay. File, save as a new part. This will just we just want one one view of the drawing so we don't care what it's called. Call that OK. Close parts in your mind bin. Export part. Go back to your directory. Save it in there. And then we'll go back to our, our directory. In the directory we have our FZPZ again. Change the extension. Extract. We now have the schematic SVG. This is the one we're going to be using, so we don't have to modify it. Close it. Back to Fritzing. Now we go back to our original part. Edit part. Go to schematic. File. Load image. Back to your folder. 
Zena died. We're going to, we're going to be using this schematic. Open. And now that one. File. Save. Okay. Close. Now we'll look at the piece. Now we want to change this to something else. We'll go search. This time we'll look for a resistor. SMD. We'll just grab one. We'll use this drawing here now. Right click. Edit part. File. Save as a new part. Any name will do. It's in our bin. Export. Back into our folder. Save. We'll go back to our folder. We we'll change that resistor to our zip again. Extract. We now have a PCB of that resistor. Now you'll see there's no silk on this. What you have to do is get the editor out again. And you'll see it's in a certain configuration. There's a copper group. Inside the copper group is your connector pads. In here you see the copper one group. That's all copper pads on top of it on top of a PCB board. If there was a group inside copper one called copper zero with copper pads in it, that'll have copper pads under the board, so you'll have a two sided board. We can select each pad one by one. As usual you can change the size if you want. Just come up to here with the arrow selected. Just change it to one. You can do whatever you want. Now you'll see there's no silk screen. There's a silk screen here, but no silk screen. There's no outline of the part. Hold the shift key down and press the black here when this is when the silk screen is highlighted. Then your silk screen appears. That's that was an old format of drawing where they used a white silk screen, so you couldn't see it. Now inside here we'll have our nodes. This one's just a plain rectangle. But let's say we want to put a stripe in here like a diode. So we select the line, we'll click anywhere on the screen, hold the control key down to keep the line roughly straight, and just click on it. Now we'll do all our changing of stuff afterwards, we don't worry about beforehand. We'll move our editor away. We go into what's called fill and stroke. Now, Fill is what's inside an object. Stroke is the outline of it, or the boxing around it. Stroke paint, we have, we'll now pick black. So you hold the shift down, and we go black. Stroke style, we want a square end. We want it, we want it the same height as this box. Okay, now we want to put this line inside here to make it look like a diode. So we have to change the height. So we'll come to our silk screen with the arrow selected. We know it's 1.9 high. We go back to our path and now change that to 1.9. Of course you can do it the other way, just grab the arrow and drag it where you want. But you have to see what settings here, it changes proportionally. You have to have all these buttons pressed or whatever, which we won't go into. So anyway, we grab the part, we put it in, in position. It's a little bit high. I might just shrink it down a bit. 1.88. Now we have to put that path into the silk screen group. You just click on it. You indent it. It's now in the silk screen group. You can you can move it where you want. Unindented, up, indented. It's now in the copper group. Put it back. It's now in that group. PCB view is very important. Uh, it has to be dimensionally accurate because it goes into production and it needs clearances and stuff like that. So it has to be very accurate. 
and also the structure, the XML structure that Fritzing wants. He wants a copper layer, a copper group here, and inside that a copper zero group if it's double sided, which it usually is because it's copper zero is the bottom layer, so it's got to have a copper, copper zero for a bottom layer at least. And then there's a silk screen group where everything like text, lines, anything black, black around that's not important. But the copper group is uh, quite technical. So you, you label them, uh, you label pads like copper zero pad and you give them a number and when you import them into Fritzing it knows zero is one and so it knows, puts them in order. And if you want a hole in the board without having a copper pad put down first, you put a non-com zero, non-connector, which is non-com. But this this section is so technical in how finicky it is, it's it's a bit takes a while to get used to it or, or learn it even. Like um, you, the old style used to have separate copper one and copper zero, whereas now copper zero is in an empty group of copper one, and copper zero has all the contacts, so you don't have to duplicate everything. So you just put everything in copper zero and have zero inside copper one, and that'll put both both um, contacts on both sides of the board, and also holes have to be in a copper group. Uh, you can you can just have put a circle in there, a connector, and it'll be etched copper first before it's drilled. Or the non-com will actually drill the hole without putting the copper down there first. But but holes and stuff, anything that gets pierced through the board has to be in copper sections. So just file, save as, change the name, plane, save, and that'll do. Back to Fritzing. This is our part. This is our temporary part. So we'll edit that again. We'll edit from here. Hopefully there'll be less crashes. PCB, file, load image, find your image. It was in the resistor. It was the PCB with number two. We have it there. Yeah, it's a bit um, how you're going, the new version just zooms in and out like that. Sometimes these contacts will be in the wrong place, so you just click on it, select graphic, you want that one, click it, you can put it in east, west, north, south, or whatever you like. Select the other one, you want that graphic, and that's it. And also in the edit, there's uh, connectors. You have one connector if you want, and it'll cut. Cut that out. Put in five, whatever you want. You can delete one in a line, relabel lab them, whatever you want. Now we have to edit the meta. So we go back to our original part. We go metadata. The name up here is what name will appear in the inspector up here. So we will go diode SMD. You can add more description notes here. It's label D, which is the part, the D of the number. It's in the family of Spark Fun Diode, so when you select it in the package style, everything in that family will come up there. You can change the package SMD. Side SMD, I'll just remove all that, whatever you want. Just a general diode, change down here. SMD, SMD, whatever, 0805, whatever it is, it's only an example. And just file, save, OK. Uh, it has that error too, you just double save it. Alright, delete everything. Pull it on. That's our part. 
put the Zenith there, breadboard there. See all the different packages here. You can change your package. If the part hasn't got a name, you can give it a give it a part name, and the label will turn up. One N four double O four. Then we right click, show part label. See, it comes up there, and that goes into your bomb when you produce your bomb. So it comes in handy. And that's about it. You go back to your my bin and all these temporary parts you just took a, a SVG off just delete them remove part remove part that's about it you now have to close down fritzing so it memorizes the parts in your bins because sometimes it can crash and you lose everything. So just close it down, close it all down. Don't save this sketch, but save parts bin.